We are live. All right. Um, it is now 3.30 uh, and we will begin our meeting. Uh, may we please call roll? Uh, Chair Rogers. Present. Member Staff. Here. Member McDonald. Let the order reflect that all subcommittee members are present with the exception of Member McDonald. Perfect. Thank you. Moving on to item two, which is our public comment on non-agenda matters, and I will hand it over. We'll do housekeeping first. Oh. Um, sorry. Uh, welcome, subcommittee members, panel members, and members of the public. Thank you for joining us in person and via Zoom. This meeting is being recorded. As a reminder to all present, please set your cell phones so as not to disturb others. The city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. We have provided a hard copy of today's agenda. Please feel free to use one to follow along or by the door. After an agenda item has been presented, the chair will ask the subcommittee members for their comments or questions and then immediately following their discussion, the chair will open the item for public comment. If you are attending in person and wish to comment, you will be called on when the agenda item is open for public comment. Please raise your hand to indicate that you would like to comment. Once you've been called upon, you will be asked if you wish to state your name for the record. Each public comment is limited to three minutes and a courtesy timer will appear at my desk. If you do not have a comment but would like to ask a question relevant to the jurisdiction of the subcommittee, there are forms located at the entrance of the conference room. Please complete the form and leave it in the basket, and the staff liaison will address your questions appropriately prior to the next scheduled meeting. Our, form, our meeting format is integrated to allow members of the public who are using Zoom to view and listen to the meeting. Any email comments that are received by the deadline will have been included and uploaded to the agenda prior to the start of today's meetings, and the emails received are not read into the record. All right, we will now have our public comments on non-agenda matters. Is there anyone in the public that is wishing to make a comment? Seeing no one in the public that is wishing to make a comment, we will now move to item three, which is approval of the minutes. Uh, reflection at uh, 3.1 February 8th, 2024 and March 14th, uh, 2024 were canceled and the subcommittee did not meet. So we will go to item 3.2, which is a special meeting that was held on January 25th. 2024, and I will look to Vice Mayor Stepp to see if he has any corrections okay. or minutes. That's good. All right, so we will now take public comment on item three. Is there anyone in the public that is wishing to make a comment on the minutes that are before us? Seeing none, um, the minutes will be approved. Moving on to item 4.1, which is the Bennett Valley Golf Course Operations Overview and Update. And I will uh, pass it on to Jen Santos. Thank you, Chair. I'm Jen Santos, Deputy Director of Port Recreation and Parks. And uh, for the record, yes, yeah, Scott Wagner, Deputy Director of Finance. And then I also have with me uh, our executive members of Touchstone. Ray Anderson, general manager. Mark Lisman, I'm the president of Touchdown. And James Birchall, vice president of operations. All right, next slide, please. So, um, oops, missed one. Yeah, this one? Yes. So uh, this is just a, a, a look at what we're gonna be talking about today. We'll look at the debt service for the golf course. Uh, look at general fund assistance the golf course has received over the years. And then we're going to look at uh, Touchstone's uh, current budget and the, uh, the previous budget and the current budget mid-year and then the proposed budget. And we'll look at the rate increases that we're proposing for fiscal year 24-25 and go over the capital projects. Next slide. And uh, I think everybody knows where the golf course is, but just a quick reminder, it's an 18 hole golf course with a restaurant event center, golf pro shop driving range and a maintenance yard. 
uh, and I'll put a reminder in that uh, our operator Touchstone Golf was um, approved and started operations on July 1st, 2022. Next slide, please. So when we look at the debt service, um, why we have debt service at the golf course is because in 2004 slash five, uh, the city undertook some major renovations at the golf course. And those included a new restaurant, event center, and then underneath that is the golf cart uh, staging area and parking area, and then also a new pro shop and some other um, updates from, from in those buildings as well. And so since then, we've paid um, a debt service for the, the uh, bonds and loans we have taken out to construct that. And it's around uh, $450,000 a year. It fluctuates, uh, you can see in the, in the chart over the years, but it's generally around $450,000 a year. The golf course uh, bonds, which is the uh, bar on the top are those, um, you know, in my, in my mind, that's the loan we have. I don't know, Scott, if you have a better way of describing it that's more financially accurate. No, that's, uh, that's like, so the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the top lines we're looking at here are really what we'll call bonds. They, yeah. they are the formal bonds that were issued for the construction of yeah. the yeah. of those two facilities Jen just mentioned. Below the line here, we're talking about an inter, interfund loan that came from park development fees that, mm -hmm. that we've all had discussions at that council before about. But that is the secondary line where we do record that on our city's financials. It is properly recorded like any other legally binding debt, although it's held within the city's funds. Right. So um, you can see that, you know, we're going to be paying us off relatively soon in 2030. And you can see how much it is for the next few years. And then our total for the bonds is three million one hundred twenty nine thousand eight hundred forty seven and fifty cents. And then the interphone loan, which is the loan we took out against uh, park development impact fees, is the is five hundred and five thousand nine hundred five fifty five dollars and sixty cents. Uh, but th that's the total we owe right now. And then the big total is the three million six hundred thirty five thousand eight hundred three and ten cents. So that's our debt service right now. Uh, we are working to gain enough revenues to make sure that we are paying those debt services as we go. Next slide, please. And then we talked about what sort of assistance has the golf enterprise received over the years. And uh, if you look all the, way, all the way to your left in fiscal year 2013-14, uh, there was a transfer of $469,165.80. And those are really, uh, that is a time where we were looking at uh, diminishing returns, so to speak, is probably not the right technical language, but we, the golf course need a little bit of help to get through and to get through the next uh, year. Um, we also had in the following year, $471,801 uh, transferred from uh, the general fund to the Bennett Valley Golf uh, to pay for the debt service in the general fund golf course. And so those are those debt services that we just looked at. So the, that fund, those monies were able to help back in 2014 and 15. And since then, it's been a while. Um, the golf course has been moving along with this, uh, with that interjection of funds. And in 2021 and 22, we had a $350,000 um, interjection when we were looking before Touchstone was coming on and as they were coming on to uh, make sure we uh, increase the reserve balance. As Touchstone was coming on, we were projecting higher reserve, higher uh, revenues, and there's a higher risk, so we know we needed a higher uh, level of reserves in there uh, as a buffer for our, for the golf course. And and, I'll and add, I was going to say, how I'll would you like to describe let, yeah, that? I let probably me, let me let me <laughs> add too because I I want this slide to really convey a couple of different messages and and really when we look at the past 2013 14 and you see those in, you know infusions of money from the general fund. One, I want to bring up that. The golf course insolvency is not something that happened in 21-22. That this has been a, a longer term mm -hmm. problem. And what I'll bring up, because I remember those years here at the city, is that those infusions really were to solve an insolvency issue at the course, not to provide the necessary upkeep on the course, not to whatever. Right. At that point, the, the fund was essentially zero. 
and it had been run into the ground, I, I would say financially. Over a period, I think uh, I will say that after that point, what what I'm really glad we're here discussing this is because I don't want the golf course to be a we you know we solve an insolvency issue one year and then we forget about it on those years with zeros and pretend that everything is now fine at the golf course. We need to have a more consistent approach, and we need to be bringing this information to you all to make sure that it is at the forefront of an understanding instead of us coming back later and asking for millions of dollars from the general fund. So that is really a message to be given here in that insolvency, nothing occurred, a little bit of shore up of that reserves in 21, 22. And then our 23, 24, as you know, a large capital amount was included in that, not just for the operating, but that inclusion for uh, the water storage issue at the, at the course. Perfect. So that gives you a big overview. Thank you, Scott. And then next slide, please. I'm going to turn it over to Touchstone and they're going to talk about their uh, fiscal year 22-23 numbers. Thank you very much, Jen. I'll take this slide. Um, the numbers here represent our first full fiscal year of revenue expenditures and EBITDA or net earnings. Um, we almost achieved our target goal in that first year. We just missed it by 2.8%. So we did almost $3.4 million of revenue at the golf course. Um, with our cost of sales and our food and beverage operation getting into full swing at the end of the 2022 year, we had cost of goods that we purchased. So that was a little bit over target. But ultimately, the net earnings or EBITDA line was a positive $192,000 for the golf course. We achieved about 55,000 rounds, a little over 55,000 rounds, not quite to our target. If you remember in January, in March of 2023, we had those atmospheric rivers that came through that significantly impacted the golf course rounds of golf and green fee revenue um, in that first 2023, first four months or so was, was pretty impactful for us. So the rounds didn't quite make our target, um, but the food and beverage really carried the, the story in that year with the opening Iron and Vine. Um, really getting the promotions and marketing in the restaurant going that helped us achieve a net earning prof profitability uh, for the EBITDA target for 22-23 fiscal year. Next slide. To give you an idea of where we are for the first six months of this fiscal year of 23-24, um, we have achieved about $2.3 million of revenue, which is right on target for our plan. Um, from July to December of 2023. And if you look at where we were this same time in 2022, it's a significant growth in revenue. Um, the restaurant is in full swing, uh, banquets and private events are happening and our tournament uh, business is starting to pick up as well through our first six months of operations. And uh, we brought on more staff as we've grown the uh, operations from our learning center to the um, food and beverage operation as we've grown the banquet business. So payroll is um, up compared to prior year, but right on plan, as well as operating expenses are higher. Um, we've seen a significant increase in our utility costs for running the golf course from electricity to gas, as well as payroll increases with minimum wage and labor increases um, have happened over that time frame. But our improvement to net earnings or what we call EBITDA is almost uh, 200 and, well, it is $285,000 of, of EBITDA, so net earnings. And at this same time last year, we were actually operating in a negative. And where you saw, we actually finished at 195. So we're really excited about the 285 where we are mid-year, mid though we're not at our target. Um, where we've seen the growth too is in our rounds. Um, compared to prior year for the first six months, we're up to 31,000 rounds, not quite to our target. But what's been the biggest impact for us is the average rate. If you look at where we were this same time last year, the overall average rate for green fee cart fee uh, was only $30.27. And with council's approval, when we did the rate increase in March of 2023, that has significantly helped us grow our revenue target um, and the average rate up to $35.51. We'll talk about rate increases a little bit later, but it is, it is very important that we continue to look at that as an opportunity to continue to grow revenue and to help us achieve the EBITDA target and um, help the fund for the golf course. Um, memberships are starting to grow as well as a target. We're growing more members every day. And so we're really excited about the 
second half of our year. Though January and February, we've seen similar rain as last year, so it's been impactful for the first couple months of 2024, uh, but we're looking forward to sunnier days uh, to finish out the year. I'll take it. Um, so the, um, as it relates to our 2024-2025 budget that we're proposing to all of you, there's um, this slide shows a comparison. Um, first column is where our proposed budget. The second column <clears throat> is the performance at the golf course over the last 12 months. That's the LTM column. And the third column is where we completed the 2022-2023 fiscal year. So there's a, a couple of points about this that I'd like to point out. Um, number one is the revenue growth that we're planning for this coming year compared to 2022-23 and the LTM. This is driven largely by normalized weather and a 3,000 round increase um, and the associated green fee car fee revenue. In addition, we're planning for $800,000 of food and beverage revenue increase over the 2022-2023 year. And that is the trend that we're seeing. That first year, we were starting from a standing stop as it relates to the food and beverage operation. Now we are in full swing. The um, sales effort for having catered events, uh, other private events, um, weddings, uh, community programming, all of that that we're um, having in the Iron and Vine restaurant, um, it's in full swing right now. And so we're planning for that level of revenue. You'll see that we're also planning for a significant increase in our average green fee carp fee. And we'll talk a little bit later on. Uh, this is a preview of the rate increase conversation that we're going to have later on. But we have included that in the budget. I think um, important to point out with this is in the budget is the EBITDA amount that we're planning for this year, which is 557000 The um, So as that relates to the debt service that Scott and Jen were talking about, so if you're, the debt service is about 450000 a year. The EBITDA that we're planning is... 557,000, so a little more than $100,000 delta. So we are planning to be able to cover the debt service and then have $100,000 left over, which is terrific. That $100,000, there remains a substantial amount of deferred maintenance at the golf course. And with the cost of projects, we'll talk about the NGF's um, report in a little bit. That $100,000, does not go too far. And so the good news, we're financially solid. The Delta, that $100,000 is not a huge amount when we talk about the deferred maintenance. Important to note that this $557,000, this EBITDA that we're talking about, that is assuming the rate increases that we're gonna talk about a little bit. Can I? Can I interrupt? Yeah, that's, that's okay. Because um, because that's great information, and and you know I, I want to also say to to the team here at Touchdown, as the city's realist sometimes, and 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 I work with a lot of vendors at the city. I really need to compliment Touchdown as far as their transparency, their financial reasoning, and 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 how they've been running our course. I've been so impressed, but I I want to really temper everyone's understanding of their ability to get us out of this very large problem at the course. And certainly the $557,000 is going to be helpful, but we also have more expenses with the golf course that are not fully encompassed within their budget. And so certainly we're, we're excited to see the growth in the areas that they're speaking about. I see it when I look at their financials, I see that revenue growth within their within food and beverage I understand how they were starting at a stop still and in a lot of ways with golf as well, especially with tournaments, et cetera. 
And so I see the momentum here with, with Touchstone, but we've got a ways to go before we're thinking to ourselves from a general fund standpoint that we're good with the golf course, not even just on the capital side, on the operating side as well. We have around an additional six to $700,000 worth of city expenses covering debt service and expenses on our side, Jen's time, et cetera, to cover it. Can, what is that again? I'm sorry. What are we saying again? So on the city's side, it's on a different slide. Okay. Oh. I know. Jen, it's on a different slide. It's uh, here, Scott. It's thank you. This is the operating base uh, proposed is 347,635 for city Valley golf course. So those mm -hmm. are things we need to. So we're, we're right around $400,000 worth of expenses on our side right. of, of things. Right. And, and that, that covers a lot of different issues. So we have some professional services contracts that go through us. Um, the, some of the equipment expenses go through us as far as our repair shop, working on the equipment that's there, which is substantial. Um, really, my time, Jen's time, the overhead time that's going to get charged to the, co to, the, to the course as part of general fund support and how we treat all of our enterprise funds. Um, and then, of course, the big number is, is the debt service, which, which we're talking um, since Scott did stop us, <laughs> do you have anything to say uh, thus far? I, I think I would just say that um, Iron Vine is great. I enjoy being there and I've heard nothing but wonderful things about it. Um, so I really like what, what you guys are doing. Um, and I also get pretty regular communication um, about what's going on at the golf course and inviting people to come and celebrate or do something or come eat or, and that wasn't something that we had before. Um, and for me to, to just say, thank you for being the realist because <laughs> we need the realist. I, but I, I think that, um, council knew that there was a lot of problems at the golf course and we continue to put money into the golf course and ask this wonderful company to come manage it. So uh, it's not new. Um, I would rather have a community center or something like that if I can be truthful, but I know that it is very important. Um, when I went there, I fell in love. So that is why we continue to try to, try to do what we need for Bennett Valley Golf Course. I think, when you talk to council and you're, and you're saying this is how much money you're putting into something and this is what we can't do, I think that that would maybe be a different light. And I don't know if you want to approach it that way, um, but we kind of knew what we were getting into. It's like uh, putting a lot of money into an uh, old car or to restore it, or are you going to go uh, buy a new car? But the old car is a classic, right? It's a gym. So how do you decide on those two? Um, so th those are just my comments um, thus far. Do you have anything? Um, just a couple thus far. Uh, could, could you break out what the what the revenue, um, the difference in revenue expectations from iron and bond versus the course? What's the revenue split between those two entities? Um, we can definitely get into, I know iron and bond total revenue that we're planning is about 1.8 million. And their net earnings uh, from operations from just the food and beverage. Now, we have our financial system. We put all of food and beverage operation, but there's clubhouse and other expenses. Yeah. But the net earnings from food and beverage is about three hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. Okay. So, um, and I was just looking for back of the envelope numbers. So, is Iron Vine about forty percent then revenues? Am I estimating that right? It is. Yeah. Green right. fees are the other largest impact for revenues, which just from green fees alone is almost 1.5 is what our plan is. Not including membership dues or tournament fees, but just daily play. Got it. 1.5. All right, that's helpful. Um, I'll have a few more questions at the end. Um, okay. But as long as, long as um, both um, Alan and the mayor, and the mayor or, sorry, Scott and the mayor mentioned the, the compliments of Touchdown, I'll mention that in recent, recent um, city gatherings, I've had other, other municipalities come up to me and say how much they like working with you. So I'm glad to know that that's been our experience as well. And that's what I've heard from the community. So thank you. Um, and I'll bracket my other questions until the end. All right. 
So I think we can all agree that we picked a great company. <laughs> and we'll continue with the presentation. I will say, Greg, our general manager, has been outstanding. I mean, he's the one we, Mark and I are talking, but he's he's been the silent guy at the table, but he's been leading the team and just done a fantastic job of building the team there. Really kudos to, to Greg. Okay. Great increases. Next slide. Yeah, see what's, here's take that. Yeah. Um, so as we've been, been talking about and we've shown some rate increases over the last um, couple budget cycles, um, really to give an overview of why we, we feel that fees are necessary to be increased. As you've seen from our presentation, the operating costs continue to rise, whether it's utilities, payroll, um, and just general operating cost of goods. Um, we continue to feel that increase and we need to make the golf course more profitable to obviously offset, so hopefully debt services, deferred maintenance and operating costs. Um, and again, help the general fund. Um, there are more improvements that are needed, which will show a list of, of our proposed CapEx improvements, um, but this includes equipment, drainage, T-leveling, um, cart path work. Um, there's just so many areas of improvement as you talked about a classic car it's a beautiful golf course and people love it it's a gem it's the most valued or best value in sonoma county but there are some deferred maintenance that we need to why we are asking for a rate for the increase next slide please to give a little history jenny you still want, we're still going right yeah yeah <laughs> a little history on this is um from what we found, there were only about three increases um, to the green fee structure over the last 11 years from 2011 to 22. And each of those were, I, from what I've heard, were very controversial or, or hard to hear because when you space out your increases over time, you kind of have to do these large increases up front to get caught up. And so um, Council helped and improved an increase in March of 2023, which was great, which was on average about a 10% increase. Um, but that still kept the golf course below our competitive set and market value. But it was a significant increase um, to what the rates were prior. Um, again, as I said, these inconsistency with rates cause a larger ask every time if we don't consistently ask for rate increases. So what we're proposing in our ask is this next fiscal year, we are asking for another about um, 10 to 15% increase in the rate um, for this next fiscal year. And we have a comparative slide of our, our market set to give you an idea of what that will look like. Um, but then every subsequent year after that, a more nominal minor dollar or two increase that will keep us in our market rate um, but won't be such a big hit to the, to the consumers when they come out play. Um, and again, still being the best value um, in the marketplace. Um, we are proposing a resident and non-resident rate, which hasn't been um, at the golf course. Um, when we went to um, our Save Bennett Valley group, what's your, um, and uh, the board, one of the things in council asked us to do a little research on why Bennett Valley either did or didn't have a resident rate. Um, and what we found was that um, from when we started to now, about 68% of the rounds are Santa Rosa residents. And so by um, doing a resident and non-resident rate, we can um, more gently increase the resident, but then do a higher increase for the non-resident play. Um, they are visiting and coming to the great golf course, but they pay a higher rate. And that's consistent with some of our competitors in our area. So on the next slide shows just a sample of what a fee increase would look like for Bennett Valley. We chose our weekday rates. Um, the first column is the current rate that starts at 37 and goes down to our junior fees. We are saying that we would like to um, uh, keep our junior fees um, at the same level. We want more juniors coming to the golf course. We don't think they need to be charged a higher rate as well as our um, uh, so we're keeping that rate the same. But as you look through the um, different golf courses between Windsor, Foxtail, Valley of the Moon, or Rooster Run, the average fee that they charge is in that white column on the uh, far right there, and how much, even at our proposed rate that we are in our deep green here, 
what the percentage under our competition for each of these rates. And in some of our um, non-resident rates will be cheaper than a resident of another town's rate. So we still think we can pull those non-residents to come to Bennett Valley because our rates are still gonna be better than theirs as a, as a non-resident playing Bennett Valley with our proposed increase. So this is just a sample of our weekday. It would have been a much longer slide if we went into more depth. Mm -hmm. or The key thing here is just running right across and see, look, uh, identifying what we are proposing in column two and compared to a similar rate right across the board at all these other golf courses, see how it falls into. And we tried, the, you know, the senior fee is significantly under our competitive set, um, but we also tried to taper that one as gently as possible as well. And also something on uh, Foxtel North Course, they have a mandatory card, which I, I deducted that rate from the yep. fee. Next slide. Thank you. So I we want to touch on the capital needs summary <clears throat> and back up to 2022, 2021, when the city hired National Golf Foundation to uh, Look at the golf course and see what sort of um, investment is needed in the golf course coming up in order to make it profitable. And so uh, we have a few things on here. I wanted to remind everybody too that these cost estimates have not been adjusted. They are straight from the National Golf Foundation's uh, project list in 2022. Um, but we, you know, if you look at the top, it's the irrigation system the drainage system, there's a lot of things on there that have been significantly delayed and therefore, much like the golf fees, now cost much more to, to get done. We are taking that first step by starting our water supply and uh, storage pond for the irrigation and um, some new electrical equipment there with that. That's, a, that's fantastic to do that, but we still have a long way to go. Next slide. And then um, same here, I did want to uh, miss out on the opportunity to look at what National Golf Foundation was suggesting is optional, um, optional things that the golf course needed to do. I know that um, Touchstone has already actually been doing some of these capital improvements because well, National Golf Foundation has, you know, the very logical about how they approach it. Um, I've learned a lot about golf since uh, Touchstone has come on board and um, they, you know, greens and tees, they, they need to be right in order to have a really good golf play and attract that golfer to our golf course. So I wanted to, to, to see these uh, costs here. And again, it's the same thing. We're not looking at uh, costs to do that this year. We're looking uh, back at 2022, but at least you can get a sense of the overarching need at the golf course due to lack of, um, you know, these uh, taking care of these over the years. So it's even more now. It's even more now. Yeah, if this is 2022, right. it's a lot more now. It's it, yeah, it, it's it's there's a good percentage. Yes, thank you. Uh, next slide, and I'll turn it back over to Touchstone. They're going to look at um, some of the projects and equipment they've purchased in since 2022. The things they've been able to get done so far. Or did you want? Sure, I'll go for this. So I think it's good if he talks through. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we've made a lot of changes. Uh, one is obviously in the restaurant. We had to uh, rejuvenate that, that facility. And, um, you know, I can go down the list each one of these. But basically, we only have a couple uh, that are still withstanding uh, from our, our initial uh, commitment with the city. Um, but, yeah, we built a beautiful pergola on the back deck of uh, the banquet room. Uh, new carpet, which again is turned at night and day of the difference in the filling in the clubhouse. Uh, we talked about the tee, some of the work that we've done. Um, leveling a, a golf tee is very important uh, for the consumer. It's something they notice right away. Uh, tree trimming is a constant job at our facility is tree trimming and stump removal. Um, there's, there's one of the open umbrellas there. Uh, irrigation system, proposed lake, that's... Um, that's a uh, irrigation system. Oh, that's what we looked at before we engaged mm -hmm. the city. Um, and we go down to the POS system. We got involved with the uh, POS when we first started, walk-in floor, kitchen. Thing. So there's the, what haven't I done? I haven't done the sound system yet. 
in the uh, banquet room. We're working with them right now. And as I mentioned before, the uh, tree removal, still working on. Uh, we've got the cars. I mean, these are next all slide. Oh, oh, next slide. One second. We've made a lot of improvements. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, I was just going to say, with the city, you know, this has been wonderful that we've gone through this. Uh, the, the folding chairs, I mean, we're, we are now becoming a really popular wedding venue because of the stuff that we have been getting. And, and I'll, so, I'll frame it as well, Craig, in that touchstone is, and I really call this like operating capital needs. And, and, and this is, these are the things that really have made the public felt invited back into, into our golf course in Iron and Iron and 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 they're valuable and they were needed and, and, and they are going through that process of doing that. And, and I really call this operating uh, even more so than capital. Capital is what we talked about a moment ago as the mayor, you know, wisely described as a large need that's getting larger though. Right. Well, I'll just tack on to one of the things we heard from National Golf Foundation was that for the golf course to be successful in the future, we need to start, we need to start investing. And so we, you know, have to do some of these things in order to make this golf course viable and to keep it open. Uh, and it was a it was a good call on National Golf Foundation to help us understand that and recognize that. So, and every asset is is make, making the city better, the city property better. So everything you know, as I go through this list, is is pretty massive. There's a lot of money here, but yes, the walk-in kitchen. Um, for those of you who had been there before, <laughs> it was basically a cardboard wet. Anyway, yeah. it's a lot better. Yeah. Um, Prime range. And then, you know, again, we're asking for, and as we look at next year, we're asking for another blower, um, you know, for, for equipment because that's such a great asset in the fall that we have with all the, the brush that we get on the ground. Uh, furniture and restaurant, we just ordered some that we should be expecting in April, middle of April. And again, talking about a new look into our facility, uh, something really modern. Uh, it's going to be spectacular. Uh, we received uh, the two um, greens mowers mm -hmm. that we got from the, the city. And we also received $2 million in capital funds or general fund for the, the water supply irrigation lane that we're continually working on, hoping to get that done um, sometime in the fall of this year. Uh, the initial plan was in the um, March of next year. But as we were walking the golf course today, I just simply have anything like this. March would be really difficult to get the equipment out there. But no, we, uh, we got new carts, and uh, that's a wonderful new asset, too. Of course, we went from having 60 carts that were seven years old to now 72 new carts. I can do a, a full field golf tournament, and we have now the facility to do uh, a lot of big numbers, and not have any problems with our carts. And um, no, it's, our capital is in equipment needs. Summary has been really exciting. Next page. Next page, please. Oh, or, I think we are you on it? I know this is what we're. I got the wrong glasses on. <laughs> so what we're looking forward to, um, we have a POS system now that doesn't work as well as I'd like for our restaurant facility. So we're looking to improve that. Uh, it's all about customer service for me. Um, and then our, we're looking to have some utility carts. My utility carts right now, for my maintenance team, are we're basically just holding things together. Um, fairway aerator to make our greens, our fairways uh, more consistent. Throughout last year, we we aerated the, the fairways, and uh, it's the first time it's been done in maybe 25 years, and people notice that right away. Um, uh, something I'm looking forward to doing is a par three course. Uh, I went over to Centers of Country Club last week with my superintendent. I mean, nobody on my golf course under a beautiful day bothers me. So uh, they have a par three course that they set up. And they hit off mats and then to the green. And they, they had the day I was there on a beautiful day, they probably had 65, 70 people. Playing. So that means people in my restaurant. So we're going to try to do that inside, but that's a minimal investment of $25,000. But I think that's, that's really good for us. Um, more furniture for inside, uh, outside patio furniture, uh, continual stump and tree removal, bridge repairs, and car path repairs. So um, again, a nice ask is sums up to a lot of money, but you know, all things that are very important to us in our operation.
So we, we do have a recommendation here, uh, for a recommendation by the Recreation and Parks Department that the long-term financial policy audit subcommittee provide feedback regarding the Bennett Valley golf course overview mm -hmm. and recommend council approval proposed golf fee rate increase for fiscal year 24-25. Next slide. Okay. And we are all here for any questions or anything else. I, I apologize, but can I maybe just frame one time more at the end for our committee? Um, as we're moving forward in our next coming budget cycle, we, the finance team, we are working through the numbers that, that Touchdowns provided. We're working through our proposed budget to really nail down what we believe a, a correct general fund subsidy will be for this next coming uh, budget cycle. Um, I don't have that number yet. We're still doing that work. But what I do want to prepare council for is that we do anticipate one. And again, it comes back to the concept of coming, going to those operating capital needs that are still at the course to just get the course welcome, welcoming again, get the things that are needed, the driving mats, all those things are, are the basics still. And we're still working through them. And we, again, coming back to, we don't want to have a set it and forget it mindset on the golf course and not be doing the proper operational investments that are needed. Um, again, I, I wish I had a number to, to, to say at the moment. I don't, I, I think it may be a little more than last year. Last year was around 280 or so that we did on an operational basis. I would expect it to be higher this next coming year. But at this point, that's the best information I have. Higher like 300 or higher like? four. That's a lot, Scott. I'm aware. All right. Sorry. Vice Mayor. Quick question time. Mm -hmm. I, got a, I got a few, no particular order. Let's, let's, let's work through them. Um, so I'll say first, Scott, thank you for being uh, a budget hawk. Thanks to, <laughs> thanks to Alan. As the, as the mayor, as the mayor implied, we all know that budgets are tight. And so thank you for, for sharpening the, the pencil as you, as you walk through the budget to all of you, actually, because I know it's a, it's a group effort. Um, one thing that stood out to me is that with last year's price increases, it didn't, it didn't look like the number of rounds were affected. People were relatively price insensitive, um, which was, and I, as, as you indicated in your budget, it looks like we can expect that going forward, which is something that I've heard from, from golf course um, users themselves, that they were, that they were supportive of the, of the, the, the price increases. Um, so just a, a comment that it was, it was good to see that that, that, that didn't affect the numbers, um, with the membership, with the number of memberships, it was interesting that those stayed flat, relatively flat, but we're anticipating a, an increase for the coming year. Can you speak a little bit as to why that, why you think the, the membership stayed flat and why we think we can do better in the year to come? I think the, um, the winners had a huge, I haven't seen anybody. I mean, I had a guy sign up today for membership because he's only played nine holes from January. Um, we are the best valued property. I mean, as you walk into my golf shop, Mark mentioned it, this, this says best greens, best value. Yeah. Um, that's our market. I'm about to put out a, a big ad campaign about you buy your membership. Now you won't be affected by, you know, the, the new pricing in July. And I'll get, I, I, I think I'll get 30 to 40. I'm also thinking that what I'm seeing around the area, we're doing more than, <clears throat> Centers of country club, more activities than Fountain Grove. So people are quitting those clubs and joining us because we have junior golf, we have tennis across the street, we have uh, we have other things that you know that we're providing activities every week with trivia night, prime rib night. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm finding people are are quitting the the private club and coming to our. Property. Mark, I'll add to that. Um, the um, in the scale and scope of what we have focused on over the first almost two years that we've been involved. It's been, you know, getting the golf course transition, getting the restaurant up and operational, improving the golf course conditions, the myriad of projects that we've talked about today. Um, I don't know that we've put the full core press on growing that membership okay. right now. And so as we tick off items off the list, really turning our attention to that, we see that there's opportunity. All right, great. Um, another question, with the, what's, the what's a rough estimate for the total number of people serve at the course every year? Not just the rounds, but in terms of the junior golf, 
restaurant too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Throw that in. Break it down. Like rest, like at least on the on the golf course side, because that's where the big cost is. It's, it's on the it, golf course side. What would it be? Well, it's but on the golf course side, it's it's the rounds. We it, anything that if we were to answer that question right now, it would be speculation and not yeah. accurate. If it, it, it's a it's a really good important question. I think let us put some sure to that so we can answer that in a thoughtful fashion. We don't have a easy metric uh, at our disposal right now with restaurant covers, um, the amount of people that have attended our banquet and catering events, the amount of participants in the golf and lesson programs, all of that adding to the rounds. Um, and so we can put that together. We just don't know what it is. Um, well, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but if you if you were able to come up with numbers, that'd be helpful. Yeah. And and what, I'm, what I have in the back of my mind is that, in part because of the name, the Bennett Valley Golf Course gets confused with being the Bennett Valley Country Club, mm -hmm. as though it's a private establishment that really caters towards that specific area. Um, and so, if if you're if you're coming up with a number for the number of people served, I'd also be curious to know if there was some way to break down where the where the in city folks are coming from. Um, because my suspicion is from my time at the course is that we're getting, we're drawing from all over the city. That it really is a, a broad city amenity in the same way that the Finley pool or Ridgeway pool or Howard park are really city amenities, not particular to a neighborhood. And to the extent that there's data to support that, it would be helpful to have, it would, it would be helpful for council to see. We have, um, we can produce that. We have that zip code data from where our rounds are. If you're able to break that down, that would, that would be helpful. Hold on, head down to my next question here. Um, the resident, I'm glad you talked through the resident and non-resident rate structure. That makes sense. I'm glad you highlighted how the, the prices are still under, under market rate for this area. Uh, a question, well, two, two um, cost questions. So my, my brother is a PGA pro, proud to say he was just named with State of Wisconsin Assistant Pro of the Year. Yeah. Very much. I wanted that in the record. Uh, so he's in my he's in my ear with some of these costs on occasion. What does the new Greenmore cost these days for California? Fifty five thousand dollars. So that was one hundred and ten thousand dollars expense to come up with two of those last year. Yeah, I was just curious. I know they're super expensive. They, they, so it, you know, and the things that I worry about that that exact same green greens mower five six years ago was a thirty to thirty two thousand dollars. It jumped thing. And so it's just, and to add to it, they're Im impossible to get in any sort of timely manner. It's the, I was going to say, right, I think it's from us, right? Yeah, yeah. we were almost yeah, it's, been waiting for it. So I can put an order in, and then it's two and a half years later. Mm -hmm. That's what it's. Um, You're begging the vendors mm -hmm. to steal from mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yes. it's just they, they, these. Equipment vendors have such a backlog of yeah. equipment that they're trying to supply right now. And it's in their best interest to ramp up production. It's um, frustrating. It's all the typical supply chain issues we're seeing across the board. Um, so back to, back to costs and potential ROI, it came up a couple of times during conversation that, wait, that rainy winters or rainy springs have a big impact on the bottom line because people can't use the course. So in the, in the proposed projects uh, pertaining to drainage and bioswale creation, am I, am I thinking correctly that with, if we get a handle, a better handle on drainage on the course, that there is a reasonable ROI to those projects? And maybe it's a, a million or 1.2 million up front, but what, what would that translate to in terms of a return? Well, um, it would be significantly increased rounds. So for instance, um, we were not able to mow the fairways at the golf course until last week. And so right now we were walking around out there today um, with boots on and um, the team has done this. They've been working. If the sun has been up, they have been mowing for the last week to try and get us caught up. And I would say we are, the golf course is 75, 80% totally mowed out. There are some areas that are still too wet or that we are still bringing the heights down because we haven't been able to get the, when I say heights, the heights of the grass down because we haven't been able to get the mowers through it. Um, um, it has been a historical problem at Bennett Valley for um, forever. Forever, I was gonna say and, forever. Um, 
Fortunately, there are steps that we can take to the technology is there. We know what to do. Uh, there is a cost that goes with any one of these things that we do. So to your point, improving the playability in the winter, um, nobody is going to come out and play golf when it's pouring, soaking rain. But if the next day is sunny and the course is dry and firm, then people will be out. Whereas now we lose weeks of play time. Yes. And so we would discourage people from playing. Yeah. Because that, that word of mouth goes so far. I mean, yeah. we've had tournaments cancel uh, basically at our call because they would just hate it and they'd tell everybody. So that was our decision. Um, well, thank you for confirming that. And we can, when we take this up in front of council, I think that might be a helpful, a helpful point on which to expand as well. But some of these, some of these are just, some of the costs are deferred maintenance that we just have to, we have to do. But some of the projects, including some of the pricier, pricier ones are projects that have, that have an ROI built into them. There's no question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that, I think those are, are it for my my questions um, and back to the basic on the table. I mean, I, I'm certainly supportive of price increase, especially given as a, given how we've seen the last one was was absorbed without any issue, and and the feedback I've gotten from the community. Excellent. Thank you. That's it for me. All right, I have a few. Um, so we've started doing something for the irrigation. Mm -hmm. Where are we with that? Like percentage wise and like we're what they are we in a phase are there like 20 <laughs> phases like where, where are we i know you can break it down uh to micro if you'd like but yeah we are it's in the capital projects engineering team and they started the design processes in-house design and so we are now reaching out to our other departments to make sure we have Feedback from the other departments, working with the water department because we're tapping into a really big main line. And so we're working through some of those design issues right now. And we're hoping to have, you know, finished and complete construction drawings by next summer. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Uh, like summer 2025? 2024. Uh, yeah, 2025. Yes. Oh. And so we should be able, if not sooner, and then we should be able to go into construction uh, next year, if we can't make the edge, you know, one of the thing is you, you really can't do large construction work like this during the winter months. You have to go uh, because of the environmental law. So you'd be looking at doing something. If we can't get before that October deadline, then we would uh, start it in the spring of the following in 26. So that's where it's at right now. We are really pushing hard. It's a priority project for capital projects engineering for the city, obviously, to get that in. We've been working hard. We met out there last month, I think. I think it was last month to go over where, how, how it could work and, and working through that. Um, thought, so if we do it like during the summer or isn't that like prime time to come play? And won't that affect? Yes, yes. It, 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 fortunately, it's kind of off to the mm -hmm. side. Perfect. And so it's not in a, we're not having to close down holes or anything like that. We can um, work simultaneously to golf being played and the contractors that work on projects like this are used to working around golf. Um, and I think there will be a, um, there's always a level of um, excitement with golfers when they see projects going on, improvements mm -hmm. going on. And so I, I in our experience with doing these kind of large scale projects while play is going on, the golfers kind of like, yeah, this is great. You're doing something and this lake's going to be great. And so I'm, we're going to turn it to a positive. Okay. Chair, uh, Chair I, will, I will add, I, I think your comment is wise in, in that when we are looking though at the future larger capital investments, that's going to be a critical part of our analysis to talk about how it is going to affect revenue. So points well taken. Thank you. Um, will the rate increase? But I guess because of what Mark said, it hasn't deterred anyone from coming thus far. So, um, and we'll still be below most or all around here. So it should be well received, um, especially because people want the golf course to stay. Um, and so they're willing to have some investment 
um, also. With the membership, will, will there be a differential in the amount? The same okay. percentage, but also have a resident and non-resident no, instruction. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, who we spoke about programming and uh trying to have more people come in and, and utilize the, the golf course and the facility um to diversify and just let people or i spoke about children um but just having like children come and see that there's something different and um a different game to play so and i know that you were working on that um so where are we at with that programming to try to get more children over. We've connected with, um, they have a really neat working relationship with the Boys and Girls Club of the Sonoma County, it was a mm -hmm. Sonoma Marin. Mm -hmm. And they have, um, we're starting at the end this week, uh, next week actually, uh, every Thursday they come up with, a, it's actually, it's really, cause it's a different group of eight people, different group of eight kids, different. Mm -hmm. And so they're going all over, so I guess there's 40 something branches of the Boys and Girls. So we're, we're working with that. We uh, have our junior golf program. One of the coolest shots I've ever taken was we have what's called PGA Hope, which is where we give free golf lessons to veterans. And yesterday we had uh, uh, that, that group there of 15 people with my teachers. And then we had a junior class behind them of four kids in my junior class. So we are getting all types of, you know, diverse diversification is just every we're we're selling junior programs in january you know which has never been done anywhere i've worked and we we basically filled up our, our summer program we're letting people find out we had the spring break we we got four kids but that's better than we had last year which was mm -hmm. zero. um so yeah i think we're doing a really good job of, of and, and then as we bring these kids in today, I saw them when they were having their break and I walked them around the kitchen a little bit just to sort of see what the whole, mm -hmm. what happens with the golf course. It's not just cutting and chipping and hitting the ball into a hole, but this is the business part. Thank you. And we continue to build it. Chase um, uh, is our new director of instruction. It took us a while to find the right person for this role, but we're really excited about having Chase on our team yeah. now and uh, and local in the area so that he can start connecting and reaching out to bring more kids in junior leagues and junior uh, programming to the golf course. So this summer is going to be really exciting to benefit all of our juniors. Perfect. I, I love children everywhere, um, but I would be really interested to know how many come from Santa Rosa because this is such a big investment. Yep. Um, I don't. I'm trying to see how to, how to say no. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't really want like kids being coming up here from Marin, and I mean yeah. that that's great, but I I do really want to focus on our children because we have a lot of neighborhoods and places and children that could really benefit from seeing even just seeing the golf course or maybe sparking an interest or maybe they go out there and you're like wow you're really good right yeah. so that that is what I what I would like and something that I've been pushing for um, since we've made the investment. And I, noted. Yeah, Thank you. definitely yeah. noted. And I, I'm going to just give a little kudos to Greg. We did get a really nice letter from the Boys and Girls Club uh, thanking uh, the golf course for kids that would never get an opportunity like mm -hmm. that to play. It was uh, really great to see somebody take the time to write a formal letter like that and let us know that it's working. And the Sonoma Marin, I think, is the umbrella company. <laughs> well, for the whole um, area here, but we'll check and yeah. see and bring that. Okay. Um, and then I do support the rate increase. That was the question, right? I do support the rate increase. I will support the rate increase because it helps us to, to keep the golf course. Um, but I, I gave you guys kudos and said that you're doing a great job, but I would also like you to take back to your staff who are absolutely wonderful. Every event I've had there, eating in the restaurant, everything, your staff are above it. They go above and beyond. I don't even, I don't know if you got them like that or if you trained them, but like, I don't know how this will work. I trained them. <laughs> I did it, Greg. Take responsibility for that one. But they are, they're phenomenal. So please take that back to them. And I think that's another reason why people 
come back, even though we still have some improvements to do on the golf course. It's because they always get a smile. They always get someone that is willing to help them. I mean, it, there's so many reasons, but your staff are phenomenal. So please let them know that it is noted. And sometimes they don't even like, they don't know who I am, right? So it's not like they're just, they're right. just nice to everyone. And I love that. Um, so that would conclude my, my questions and my comments. I, I hope that we can really dive into uh, the projections of how we're going to do this, right? So I, I can look at this chart all day long. Um, it kind of gives me a headache because it, it's scary. The, the numbers are big. I don't, I don't have that money. Um, so what is the proposed way? And I'm looking at you because you deal with the money. <laughs> um, what is the proposed way to deal with this? And what are we not going to be able to do if we're dealing with this? Um, so I think that would conclude uh, my questions, but I do want that in um, when it comes to council. So we will now go to um, public comment on this matter. Do you have to read your script again or no? Yes. All right. Is there anyone here from the public that would like to speak? Yes, sir. All right. Please state your name um, if you would like it to go on the record. I'm Richard Carlisle. I'm president of State Bend Valley Gold. I want to just say thank you, Touchstone, for all the things that you've been doing and staff uh, and the council for holding the tiller real steady because this isn't easy to get through. We've had COVID weather, all kinds of difficult things to buck against. And uh, St. Bennett Valley is really happy about it, believe me. Um, we really support the rate increases. Um, I think what we're doing as a group, trying to look now that we think that the golf course is in good hands and saved, we're looking for other things to find out how we can help revenue, fundraising, volunteer work, whatever we can do to help the situation, because we think there's, there's really ways to do a fundraiser or something to enhance the Driving range, that could be a big revenue thing in the future. Mm -hmm. We've talked about snack bars that could be put out there that are handier for the golfer and could also serve the tennis group, the soccer group, the park. So there's there's ways to get funds out there. But, and we're here to help any way we can. And, and, and even do some volunteer work with cleaning up the creek. Once the, mm. the lakes are done, maybe we can get a full volunteer. I'm with a volunteer group right now that's cleaning up Prince Memorial Greenway. Oh, so it's a big thing to clean up a creek, trust me. So that creek is probably going to need it one of these. So we can get volunteers to help with this situation a lot. And we really thank the council and Touchstone and staff for really moving forward. Ben, do you have anything to add? I'd just like to, uh, I'm a long, long time golfer. In fact, I played out there in a valley before there was any iron and vine or new pro shop or anything. We were out of a little tiny old farmhouse, basically. Rusty putter. The rusty, rusty putter, putter, right. <laughs> And the things that Touchstone has brought to bring in community and bring people from other courses. For instance, on the Wednesday night, they have a Wednesday night out where they have a scramble, which is a nine hole type of thing. But it's not like the traditional all men or all women, it's families. For instance, you can have four people play on a team and it doesn't matter what age they are. It's for fun. We had our son, our grandson, 
and my husband and I played one night. I've seen other families where I have several uh, generations playing. So they have those kinds of things going on, which we've never had out there before. So you don't have to be a golfer that goes out every week. You can be one that goes out once a year or whatever and have fun. Um, the other thing, nobody likes a price increase. I mean, but it's the world we live in right at this moment. We're below Windsor. When I go play Windsor, I have to play pay an out of uh, resident fee. So it's nothing new to have something like that. Golfers are used to it. Um, what they've done with the golf course and how they've improved it and so forth is incredible in the amount of time that they have been out there. And to you, I understand <laughs> the financial part of it. <laughs> How to say this, it's kind of the elephant in the room. This was brought on to you guys. It was brought on to them, it's brought in to us. It was an unfortunate kind of thing that how that was built, that it went so far out of budget and has created this debt. The event center. The event mm -hmm. center. Yeah. And the, pro, the new pro shop. But they're working through it. We're trying to work through it. You're trying to work through it. And I think if we stick with it, it's going to be great. Because before this, that golf course never asked for any money. It ran on itself. And that was just the golf course and a rusty putter, which was a little teeny tiny dark little uh, grill that you could get a hot dog and you could get a sandwich or something between rounds. Mm -hmm. So I know that it's something that's going to have to go through it but it'll be worth it. And it's such an asset for this city. I cannot tell you. And I've got a lot of friends that belong. Oh, one thing I wanted to say, most people understand this, but when you talk about members, there are members, in other words, they pay a yearly fund to become, you know, and play more and so forth. That doesn't mean the people that are out, you all have over a thousand people that belong in leagues out there that aren't quote unquote members, but that is where their handicap is established, which mine is, that's my home club. There's lots and lots of people out there. I don't want to have somebody think of, oh, there's only 142 members. <laughs> so yeah. that was all. But thank you. Before <laughs> 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 I to get a new, a new stock. <laughs> that scared me. I'm like, oh. um, so uh, I would like to thank the public for your comments and you don't get in a uh, back and forth, but thank you for your comments. Um, Vice Mayor, do you have any final comments? More for me. Thank you. All right. Um, and I would like to, to say that Touchstone is great. <laughs> um, it's problems that we inherited. Um, and so we're just trying to figure out a way as a council to preserve a gym that we have in our, in our community. So. Um, Do it together. Woo, I'm trying, but the numbers. <laughs> so we quote people on our website. <laughs> it's like it's great. It's not, I, I'll, I'll give you a better quote than that. <laughs> Um, so with that, that will conclude 4.1 and we will go to uh, item five, which is future agenda items. Are there any future agenda items that, no? All right, we have, a, mm, again, the next uh, regu regular scheduled meeting for April 11 has been canceled and replaced with a special meeting on April 25th, which, yeah, I'm not here, um, at 3.30. And we'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see you. Yeah, we'll see you again. Heading back to San Jose right now. I am. Oh. <laughs>